So, apologies for a little delay in video. It seems like I say that every time, but I have a full time job, so sometimes it can be hard to make um, content all the time. But hopefully, the content I do make is interesting to everybody. Sorry, I've got a Luna right here with the ball. <laughs> There you go. So, I've been keeping a little bit of a secret from you all. Back in March, there was the Practical Astronomy Show. And while I was there, I had a great time. And I spoke to the guys at David Hines Limited. Now, they had seen my content and my, I think they'd seen my, my posts on Twitter and stuff. And they mentioned to me about the possibility of receiving a Celestron Rasa 8 to have play with, review and, and do some content with. But then after that I never heard anything and I, I, I don't chase, I, you know, if people want to let me borrow some kit that I'm happy, you know, I'm not going to pester people. Fast forward to like August and I got a message on Twitter saying, you know, can, can we have a chat? And so we've had a chat and currently there is a Rasa 8 and the light pollution filter for the Rasa 8 sat in my living room. So this video, I'm going to unbox it and we're going to have a quick look at it. I've not used it for imaging yet. I don't know how I'm going to get on setting it up. It's a completely different um, telescope design to what I'm used to. As you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a refractor girl. But hopefully, um, after I've used it, I'll be able to do a better review. But I just wanted to share this telescope with you on, um, as soon as possible, really. So, without further ado, let's get on to unboxing it. Oh, hey, Luna. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I can see you're excited too. So, here it is. In its box, ready. That's really helpful, Luna. The Celestron 8 inch Row Ackerman Schmidt Astrograph. So, most of you know that I've got a, a, a Skywatcher HEQ5, which has, I think, a weight limit of 15 kilos. I'll double check that, and if it's wrong, I'll put it in the comments. And this telescope weighs about 7.7 .7 kilos. So, all being well, we should be good to go. I already uh, took the liberty of removing the tape and everything because nobody wants to hear loads of ripping tape on a video so it's really well packed so first things first we've got some instructions which I am definitely going to need um, or as some people say destructions Hopefully not. <laughs> now, what they did include in the box for me, which I don't actually think comes with the RAS A, is a light pollution filter. Um, see it, it comes with its spectrum so this is all the stuff that we want to let through and you can see where the dips are that's all the stuff we don't want to let through so you know street lights glow and all that kind of stuff 
So I will be using this light pollution filter with a Rasserate because as most of you know I'm in Birmingham um, which is the second largest city in the UK I think. Could be Manchester, I know we were having a bit of a battle over it. And therefore light pollution is a nightmare for me. Just put that away. Getting closer. <laughs> It's a bit of a monster, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, I'm just going to grab the scope out of the box. I'll start off by saying, wow, what an instrument. This is like the biggest telescope that I've probably ever used. That. Um, I have never used this kind of telescope um, before in my life. It works um, where light enters the front end of the telescope, passes through a corrector plate, um, travels down the tube to a mirror at the back end, and then is... Apologies again, come on Luna! <laughs> and then is reflected back up the tube and through a lens into the camera which you would mount on the front end here. That that whole um, thing in itself is really, really alien to me. So this is going to be a massive learning experience for me. And I dare say you'll probably see me on the forums asking questions and maybe even begging for help. <laughs> so what else was in the Rasa box? Well, there was this little box here. Um, and if you open it up, there's a battery pack, though if you're like, you've got power management already, you'll probably have some way of powering the fan that is built in. So if I just move the telescope forward, you can see there's vents here and there's an internal fan that helps cool the optics down and helps it stabilise with the ambient temperature outside. But if you haven't got power management, there is a battery pack included. It's looking very, very retro. It's even got like a little handle to to uh, hang it somewhere. And you also get a couple of camera adapters. So that's got a very narrow opening, I think it's a C mount. Um, and that's the more traditional mount that I will be using with my Altair Astro uh, 294C camera, which Shout out to Altair, they have been super super kind to me and have let me borrow an Altair 294C and they've also let me borrow a um, Vixen to Lost Mandy adapter for my HEQ5. Now you're probably asking why does she need a Lost Mandy adapter and that's because the bar on the bottom of the Rasa is a Lost Mandy bar and the standard fitting on the HEQ5 is for a Vixen fitting and so Altair stars that they are sent me one of these a Starwave um, Lost Mandy adapter and you just bolt a Vixen bar on the bottom and then that goes into your, your Vixen clamp on the HEQ5 and enables you to mount a, uh, a Lost Mandy bar. As for looks, it's got this stunning, like it's almost like a creamy, pearlescenty, greeny, I can't really describe it, finish. Now, I, when I first saw it online, I was a bit like, mm, meh, but it's actually really stunning. The, the video and my photos probably will not do it justice, but it's not a bad finish for a telescope. So I've taken the cap off and we're now down at the business end of the scope. Now this scope, I'm calling it a scope but really I should call it an astrograph because you can't actually use this visually. There's nowhere to put an eyepiece and your camera threads onto the front end um, just here. 
Because it's an 8 inch um, aperture, if you were to put a DSLR body on here, it, it, it would cover too much of the aperture and therefore DSLRs aren't suitable for this. It's, it's mainly for a dedicated astro camera. So you get the adapters included, but you might need a spacer. So here I've got a seven and a half mil spacer attached. And that's because the Rasa 8 needs 25 mil of back focus. And my Altair 294C has 17 and a half built in. So I've added seven and a half to bring me to that 25. So hopefully I shouldn't have any focusing issues. I say hopefully because I don't have a clue. <laughs> so I'll, I'll thread the camera on now and show you what it looks like with a, an Astro camera attached. So I've attached my camera adapter and I have put my 7.5mm spacer on the actual camera end because it makes it a little bit easier, make sure it's snug. Um, and now I'm going to put my Altair 294C onto the Rasa. And there we go. So, as you can see, uh, a dedicated Astro camera doesn't block too much of the light, so we shouldn't get any degradation of um, image quality. And my cable you might think, oh, well, that's got to cross the light path. Well, as long as you sort of curve it when you trail it around, then you shouldn't get any um, diffraction spikes. Now, the Rasa 8, because it is smaller, it's not really suitable for um, full-frame cameras. The maximum sensor size I would go for on this is an APS-C. Um, you could use a full-frame, but you might get funny star shapes at the edges. They would suffer. And so um, this 294 should be absolutely perfect with this um, astrograph. So now um, we'll move to the rear of the scope and we can get a look at the back end. Now isn't that a thing of beauty? So we're going to move along to the back of the scope. Around the back of the telescope, the astrograph, sorry, I keep doing this, um, we have sort of two sort of knob areas where like, I think on the 11 inch and the, is it a 14 inch, they have mirror lock knobs, but there, are, there aren't any on the Rasa 8. And we have the um, focus knob. Now this focus knob, just it feels silky smooth and because it's based on a Schmidt um, Cassegrain telescope, it works, focusing works by um, moving the mirror back and forth but I can't see a way of actually locking the focus like on a refractor you have like a little thumb screw underneath to lock the focus but we'll see how that goes um, okay <laughs> um, and here we have the port to plug in the battery pack for the fan. Now back to this focus, um, these mirror lock knobs that are missing, that, they were used to lock the mirror in place because sometimes when slewing the mirror would flop, they call it mirror flop or mirror slop or whatever it is, whereas apparently on this it uses an ultra stable focusing system which should eliminate that and that's why they have they have been taken away. I've just taken Luna to the groomers so hopefully she's not causing as much chaos there as she does here. But back to the Rasa, I've just popped it back in the box because um, I need to actually modify my HEQ5 and get that Lost Mandy adapter fitted. I have also tried to fit the light pollution filter and I don't quite have the tool to do it yet. So that's on order from Amazon and hopefully it should arrive on Monday. But um, 
I'm really, really excited to be sharing this with you all and I will do my best to answer all and every question thrown at me. And if I don't know the answer, I will find somebody that does know the answer. So, as always, thanks for watching. Feel free to check out my website, which is www.astrostace.com. There will be images on my Instagram, which is at astrostace. I've also got a Twitter, which is the same handle. Um, I'll link it up all the these details in the credits at the end. Um, but yeah, throw some questions at me. Um, I appreciate every comment and feedback. And um, hopefully I can get used to this rasa, get some decent images, and then I can do a proper review for you guys. Thanks. Bye. Luna, what do you think about the new scope? Impressed as always. <laughs>